Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 650 of the Juice Box Podcast. Today's podcast is me speaking with Sky. Sky is a mom, the mom of Vera. Vera is a child who has type 1 diabetes. About 19 months ago, Vera became part of the clinical trial for Omnipod 5. Ooh. Oh, now you're interested. Mm-hmm. Sky is here today to tell us all about it, plus other things. While you're listening to her and I, so that's me and Sky, please remember that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Please always consult a physician before making any changes to your health care plan or becoming bold with insulin. Where are my people who love to fill out surveys? If you are from the United States and have type 1 diabetes or from the United States and are the caregiver of someone with type 1, you can go right now to t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box and fill out the survey. When you do that, you'll be supporting people with type 1 diabetes and the juice box podcast. It will take you fewer than 10 minutes. Come on, you can do it. I know you'd rather... I keep talking into the music lately i know you'd rather get online and take another kind of like you know one of those online quizzes that lets you know uh where your chakra is and everything but could you do this for me first please t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box today's episode of the podcast is sponsored by touched by type one if you're a golfer listen to this next little bit especially if you live in the orlando area touched by type one has a big event coming up Big, big, big. Golfing for diabetes. Saturday, April 2nd at the Rosen Shingle Creek Golf Course, Orlando, Florida. Registration is available now at touchedbytype1.org. The event again is on Saturday, April 2nd in Orlando, Florida. If you're a golfer, I believe they call those duffers, and you want to hit the links, I believe that's what a golf course is called, you should head over there right now and get all signed up. It's going to be a really terrific event. Touchedbytype1.org. Now I have to go look up duffer and links to make sure I use them correctly. I don't mean to bore you before this, but apparently Duffer is not what I meant. That's sort of a colloquialism for a poor or mediocre player. I didn't mean that. I meant if you're like amazing, like a little Tiger Woods. You know what I mean? Just like so good at it. I I just mean the golf part. You're like Tiger Woods. Not the part where he crashes car all loaded up on the drugs and everything and appears to cheat on his wife and stuff like that. That part, I'm not talking about you. This has gone off the rails. But if you're in the Orlando area and you want to support a great type one charity and you like to play golf, touch by type1.org. This episode of the podcast is actually also sponsored by Contour, uh, the Contour Next One blood glucose meter, that is. You can learn more about it at contournext.com forward slash juice box. It's an excellent meter. I'll tell you about it later. I'm sorry that the beginning of this episode got so messed up, but, you know, just live with it, okay? Here we go. I just want to check first. You don't work for Omnipod, right? No, I don't. No. How did you get the um, LMR? Well, do you want me to say who I am first? Oh, oh, look, see, look at <laughs> Sky. Or should I just be a mystery the whole time? No, I mean, we'll get to it. Don't worry. <laughs> Are you crippled no. with anxiety usually, Sky? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure that, you know, he's doing I'm not it forgot wrong. about. You're like, he's doing <laughs> it wrong. He's doing it wrong already. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay. Well, my name is Sky. And I'm uh, the mother of a six-year-old type 1 diabetic named Vera. Okay. But I can move on to the limited market release now, now that I've <laughs> said who I am. <laughs> I'm leaving all of this in for people. So I, I, want them to, I want them to understand in the confused way we tripped to this. Um, so so I, my question would, was going to be, um, how did you get the Omnipod 5 during the limited market release? Okay. So um, we were in the clinical trial. Um leading up to that. We were in there in the clinical trials for a year and a half. And so we were um, invited to uh, partake in the limited market release. Perfect. So you don't work for anybody, Dexcom, Omnipod, nothing like that. No. Excellent. You are not encumbered at all. Then you can say whatever you want. I am just a person who manages. I'm a, I'm a pancreas by day. That's what I am. I'm just good. (laughs) <laughs> this, this is good then. All right, hold on a and second. And by night, I guess I'm a pancreas all the time. <laughs> I was going to say, they give you off in the evenings? Yeah. 
<laughs> I get the evenings and the weekends off. It's great. <laughs> you got a better you got a better offer than I did. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, let's just find out a little bit about everything first. So Vera is six now. How old was she when she was diagnosed? She was uh, two and a half, just like Arden. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, you started off how? What was your management like from two and a half until now? So she, so she was diagnosed, um, uh, I actually, on my husband's birthday, um, at two and a half, which was a, you know, fabulous birthday celebration in the hospital. Um, she was diagnosed, uh, August, end of August, we were on Dexcom within, by October. And then we, I pushed to get her on Omnipod, um, by March. So we did MDI for six months and then, uh, we were on the Omnipod er Eros, Mm -hmm. I believe that's how you say it. Correct. Um, we were on that until, until we got onto the, the clinical trial. We were never on Dash. Okay. And we were never on any other system. Well, you just made me think. I've been saying Eros for years. So is it? I don't know. Is it Eros? I, I don't know. Is it Eros? I got to be honest <laughs> with you. Know. The way that's spelled and the way your name's spelled, I don't know anything anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> anything anything could happen, you know? <laughs> I, um, I just thought, like, how many calls have I been on where I've said Eros? I wonder if I'm wrong. Ah, well, whatever. Um, so, I figured you would know. <laughs> oh, please. I don't know anything. Uh, what, what I Here's what I know. Omnipod came out with a pod a long, long time ago. Um, they eventually made it smaller. That was always just Omnipod. Then they came out with Omnipod Dash, which I guess left them needing to call the original Omnipod something. I would have went with OG, but whatever, it's fine. Yeah. And then they, you know, Eros or E R O S is the spelling. Um, so you were always using that version of the pod. You never even used Dash once. So you didn't have access to the newer kind of digital display on the PDM and that kind of stuff is what you're saying. Yeah, no, it was all new to me and we never did loop like it. We just, we were just on that, the standard system. Um, you know, I actually, right, right when we got onto that dash was just released and my plan was to get on dash, but our insurance, our insurance didn't cover dash up until like, I don't know, I think I got a notice this, this, this last December that all of a sudden we could get dash. So, um, we were, we were just on the original. Then how do you end up doing the, um, getting involved in the research for Omnipod 5? So my uh, daughter's endocrinologist office, they were participating in the clinical trial. Um, Her endocrinologist that we ended up switching over to, um, she, she was like, I don't know, the main, main person that was doing it around for us, for our, our area. I don't, I don't know how she got involved, but um, I got an invitation uh, for the age group of two to five um, to participate. And I was like, absolutely. I'm jumping on that. That's amazing. Um, plus I got to switch endocrinologists, which I was afraid to do uh, because I, I was afraid to, you know, upset my, my other one who I wasn't necessarily pleased with the, the care we were, we were provided. Um, so I, I just jumped on it. I, I got a, a letter in the mail and then I, um, I called and, you know, we were chosen to participate in it. So it's, we're, we're recording right now in March of 2022. Um, how long would you say the LMR has been going on now? By the way, limited market release for people. So we, uh, what was it? It was beginning of February, right? Yes. Or end of January, January 28th or something like so, that. So you maybe you're like seven weeks into that part. Yeah. So we didn't get on, we got on, um, I believe it was like right it was like February 12th or February 14th is when we got onto the, the actual um, limited market release, the LMR um, okay. product and off of the clinical trial product. Prior to that, I'm just trying to figure out when did you, when did the clinical trial start for you? So we started the clinical trial September of 2020. Ooh, it's math time. So <laughs> geez, hold on. So September of 2021 is a year. And then that still leaves like four months left in 20. Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. Sorry. So there was some sort of weird, like, like you were gone for a minute. Um, I, it was not your fault. It was on my side. Uh, I was in the middle of doing my gazintas on how long it had been. So I didn't hear anything you said after that, but I'm going to just go through this again. So September to September is a year that I'm guessing there's like four months left. So 16 months. And now, so, so you've been doing this like 19 months. You've been on Omnipod five. Is that about right? Uh, live, live. Yeah, I think so. Wow. I think that sounds right. Yep. All right. Okay. I'm so excited to be talking to you. All right. Excellent. 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 So, uh, product that you're on right now in the limited market release 
no different than the product you were using during the clinical trial, I'd imagine? Oh, no, it's different. Oh, yeah, let's go back different. to the beginning, Sky. Okay, <laughs> let's like, we'll get in the way back machine. It's September 2020. Jeez, wow, a long time ago. Um, how does how does it all work? Like clinical trial, you go to a doctor's office, you go to a, uh, a trial site. What, how does yeah. it go? Oh, it was so, I was so grateful that it was really easy for us. Everything was held at our endocrinologist office. Okay. So we didn't have to go anywhere that we weren't already normally going to. We just ha- ended up having, you know, we had to go there more often. Um, but then COVID was going on. So all of the visits that would have been in person and extra in-person visits were just phone visits. I see. Um, is there a bunch of training in the beginning? How does that work? So we went in and I signed a bunch of paperwork, you know, a bunch of non-disclosure and, um, you know, paperwork saying, you know, that there obviously it's a clinical trial. It's not FDA approved. Anything could happen. And, you know, there's a risk, risks involved. And I'm like, well, that's just like diabetes. There's just risks involved. Yeah. So um, that wasn't a problem to me. Uh, but, uh, you know, we signed everything. I had to fill out a bunch of surveys, like pre, you know, how we manage things. I had to Current at that at that current time, so that they could get a judge of where we were at with our management and care mm-hmm. um, before we started the trial, and then um, we were there for a couple hours for that first visit. They trained us on how to use the the new pump. Uh, we put it, you know, got it, got one on her, uh, got all of our settings in, um, and then we were sent home with a bunch of supplies, and uh, they tracked everything. They monitored her, monitored her, her numbers the whole time. Um, and then we had, I cannot remember. Um, I want to say we had like monthly phone calls, um, as the, as it went on and they kept doing an extension the phone calls or the visits would become like space farther apart. Uh, but at the beginning they were, they were pretty close together just to, you know, check in on us, make sure everything was okay. Okay. And so, did they ask you to manage any differently in the beginning? Like I'm talking about the clinical trial part right now. Like were you asked to just not do anything, like put in the carbs and not touch stuff or how did that all go? Like, so you- I I mean, I don't I don't remember if it was necessarily said to us not to change any of the settings. I I didn't know that I was a this is going to sound kind of ridiculous, but I didn't know I was allowed to even like you know, go make any changes to my daughter's settings or management aside from what the endocrinologists were telling me, which is, um, so I don't know. So I never made any changes, but there was a, there were a couple things we had to do. Like we had to participate in some activity, um, sessions where, you know, they wanted her to do like an hour or so of activity on a day. And, um, you know, I, I don't remember exactly how it was like you, you know, don't do it with, with food or, um, you know, use their, they have an activity setting that is on the Omnipod five that they were kind of testing out. So we had to, had to do a little bit of that, but we didn't have to do anything crazy. Like there wasn't anything like, you know, she has to fast or, um, we're going to try, we're going to try making adjustments to things to see how it happened. Like what happens. It was just kind of like, they were monitoring how, how we managed it and how our blood sugar was managed and, you know, nothing, nothing insane, nothing crazy. Okay. Um, and then they would take, they were looking at her Dexcom data. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's nothing for you to do really except live with it, I guess. Yeah, pretty much. It was just live with it. I mean, there was a couple of times, like I said, we had to do some extra activity. Like they said, okay, you know, have her go outside and play on her swings or ride a bike for an hour. And then, um, let us know when you're doing that so that we can monitor it. Okay. Interesting. And how long did this go on for? Um, the, what do you mean? The, Th- this process, like, was there ever a time where you were just using it and they were collecting your data, but they weren't really asking you to do anything? Yeah. Most of the time, really? I mean, almost like 90% of the time we were, they were just collecting our data and, um, not asking us to do much of anything other than just, you know, manage her normally. They didn't need to know what she was eating or anything like that. No, they never tracked what they, what she was eating. Um, they never asked me anything like that. It was just, you know, it, it treat her like like you normally would, and we'll see okay. how it see what it does. So initially, in those first like let's say the first six months of doing this, did you notice any difference, improvement, decrease, anything at all that was notable? Oh, I mean, I the biggest thing when we started was we could sleep. 
like we were able to actually sleep. And I remember um, when I was in the office and one of the things that they told me is, you know, cause they had already been doing the trial with uh, older age groups. Mm -hmm. They were like, one of the biggest things that we've been told is, you know, parents are getting, they're getting more sleep. And I, I just, I just bawled. Like I just broke into tears and I'm like, oh my God, that would be amazing. I would love to sleep, you yeah, know, because yeah, I'm going out of my mind. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. I, mean, I know. At the, at the beginning, um, before we even had the pump and we were on MDI and uh, before we had the Dexcom, like the month, the month before we had Dexcom, I thought my husband and I were going to get a divorce over the diabetes because of lack of sleep. So, um, sleep was, sleep was just huge. And, uh, that was one of the biggest things that I noticed was definitely, um, we were able to sleep. It was man definitely managed a lot better overnight uh, right. with the algorithm. Um, I noticed that she, I mean, she was just in a, in a better range. I, you know, the way that I was doing things was like I said, very, very before that was very much just based on following my endocrinologist instructions okay. and not swaying from that. So, um, I, based on, doing it the way that they told me to do it and then allowing an algorithm to do it, there were definitely noticeable changes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get back to them in a second, but you, so at that time in her care, you did not know about this podcast. No. So I, I, I didn't know about your podcast until July of last year. I have, um, an adult, uh, diabetic friend, type one diabetic friend. And she, her name's Lisa. And she told me about your your podcast. And I, I didn't know that. So I didn't have a phone plan that had like unlimited data. You know, my husband and I shared data and I was like, Oh, well, I don't think I can use a podcast just to like listen to in the car because I'll use up my data. I didn't know that that was a thing that, it, you know, I didn't, I, I, that I wouldn't so I didn't ever <laughs> like venture out into it. I just, you know, was like, Oh, podcast, maybe they're not for me. <laughs> well, I, I <laughs> you just for clarity, you could download them over Wi-Fi and listen to them. Oh, in your I know. Later. Okay. Believe me, okay. once I like tried it, I was like, "This is what was I doing? Like, how stupid!" <laughs> I just didn't. But I just wanted to be sure I, that so you were managing in a very like doctor office centric way. There's nothing particularly special. Like, what were her A one Cs like prior to the clinical trial? So we were when we were diagnosed, her A one C was eight point five. Um, and then up into, up till the clinical trial. So we didn't start the clinical, clinical trial until what she was in 18, she was diagnosed in 18. So two years pretty much, um, into her diagnosis and her, her A1C was 7.9. So you were like barely, seven, nine to really eight, five at down. that time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, well then, so eight, five, seven, nine clinical trial, no podcast, What's the next day one C after the Omnipod five? So it was coming down. That right. was another thing we definitely noticed. Um, she was in range, which I, you know, I didn't even know about being in range until we got on the Omnipod five. Um, like where I had the clarity app, but I didn't really think about the amount of time that she was in, in any sort of range. I know that it can vary based on what your, you know, your targets are and whatnot and what your settings are. But, um, you know, they, she was in range like 79% of the time and her A1C was, slowly coming down like it went from like 7.9 to like you know 7.6 7.5 like very little 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 increments right um and then i i didn't have like a noticeable note like a really you know big difference until i actually started listening to the podcast Ooh. um i uh i started listening to you and i was like why didn't i like this is this just changes everything, you know. Like well, data plans, I can... data plans, Sky. What were you going to do? You need <laughs> to be able to take do? phone you know? calls. Like, what when the Obamas <laughs> call you for lunch, you need minutes. You know what I mean? Exactly. You're busy. I need to hold on to my data. So I was like, oh my god, you know, I didn't know that I was allowed to make adjustments. I didn't think about all of these things. You know, all this frustration my husband and I have had all of these years. It's like it could have been avoided had I found Scott sooner. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> So, um, January, it was like the end of December. I had been, I've been binging you since like October of last year. And, uh, I was, you know, I, I, I was like, I think I can, I think I'm going to make adjustments to, um, our, our settings through the clinical trial. I, there was a woman that you had had on, she was participating in the clinical trial and, uh, she was talking about how she, you know, 
needed to make changes based on what you had to, I think you were helping her, yeah. like you were following her for a little bit. So, um, I was like, Oh, well, if she can make changes. I can probably talk to my endocrinologist office and see if they'll let me to, you know, make changes. Cause they didn't kick her off the trial, obviously. Right. So, um, I, I emailed my, uh, the nurses and I was like, listen, we can do this better. You know, like I, I want to do this better going into 2022. I want my daughter's A1C below, below or at six, at least, but definitely below seven. I'd like to get it to six. Like that's my goal by the end of this year. Um, and so I just started making changes on what I thought would work. And so right before we got off the clinical trial, which was, I. Uh, in the beginning of February, right when we got on the limited market release, um, her A1C was 6.8. Nice. And that was just, a, that went from like, I think like 7 point, I want to say like 7.4 or 7.3, something like that to um, 6.8 within like a, a month of making the changes that I felt, you know, okay. I got from you pretty much. Like I got out of the podcast. Right. So this is so interesting. So I just want to recap a little bit. When you are doing this on your own, and you're doing what the doctor's office is telling you, you're seven, nine, eight in that range. The Omnipod 5 goes on, but still your settings are based on what you and your doctor have talked about. And even with that, you got more time in range and you did lose a half a point off the A1C, it sounds like. So yeah. then the next point, uh, almost next point comes off, seven, four to six, eight in a month. What did you change in that time that made that difference? So on the um, trial, our target was 140. And I like, that's what my, the doctor's office had us set at was 140. And okay. I was like, oh, well, I didn't know we could go lower. I didn't know we could go to 110, which is the lowest, unfortunately, that um, the system has, but it's still good. Mm -hmm. So I, I set the target to 110. That was one of the biggest things I did. And then listening to your podcast and you're talking about, well, if you can manage at one, 180, 200, you can manage lower than that, you know? So I started to set, set her, um, alarms back on her Dexcom to, you know, lower, to go off at a lower rate, like lower amounts. Mm -hmm. So like right now her alarm goes off at 130. Nice. Um, whereas before it was going off at 180 and they were okay. Like that, that was fine. You know, I've always been told like, that's great. You know, 180 is good. That's fine. So I didn't, I didn't know it was, I didn't think it was wrong. Like I, I thought what I was doing was right. Um, but 130 allow it allows me to catch it a lot quicker. So yeah. that was the two, those are the two biggest things I did. And then I've I've always pre bolused um, but we've been better at making sure that we do it. Like sometimes when you have a six year old who wants to snack and you know, it's it's not always the easiest, but we've we've been better about just trying to at least make sure we get ten minutes, at least a ten minute pre bolus in. Mm -hmm. How do you um, how do you address a oh yeah yeah this is my question how do you address a higher blood sugar on the algorithm so if you I don't know don't pre bolus a snack and end up at one thirty and you get a little beeping what what do you do then to do what's your next step Would I you give her more insulin um, I just I I override it and give her more I it, obviously I I did something wrong or you know, she got excited or something, you know, something, something happened that it goes up higher than I was expecting. And so I just give her more insulin. Okay. So you leave the algorithm to do that. Well, so the algorithm is going to just continue to give her, you know, many, many bullishes, like every five minutes, if it's catching that she's, if it thinks she's going to go high. Right. Um, but I, I just give her more on top of that. Okay, so you, you just get ahead of it. Instead of waiting for the yeah, algorithm yeah. to do it, you do it yourself. Yeah. Now, when that happens, does the algorithm not believe she has too much insulin and start taking basil away and you get another high? That doesn't happen? Um, it, I don't know. We've had we've had situations of both, like where I've been able to get her to come down and you know get her at a good steady level. And then I've also had situations where we end up with a low or we end up with um, it going too high because it, it'll cut off the basil the little mini the little mini boluses or it'll cut off the basil if it thinks that you've given too much yeah right exactly, because you yeah. can't go back and tell it my example here would be if you had a meal at noon and you told it i don't know 30 carbs and then an hour and a half later you, you're at 130 of a diagonal up arrow and you come in and say all right you know what maybe that was 40 carbs i'll put in 
another unit of insulin to cover the next 10 carbs. But you can't go back and tell the algorithm, I really wish you would think about that meal as 40, not 30. It, it, you can't no. do that. And if no. you were to put no. in a new 10 carbs at 130 to try to tell the algorithm, I believe there's 40 carbs in there, it messes up the timeline a little bit, right? Because now those 10 carbs aren't really, they're not new at 130. They were new at noon. Is that, yeah. Does that all make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, that, that's okay. the other thing on, um, oh, uh, go ahead. Do you have another question? I don't know. I'm thinking through it as we're talking. So, uh, you I know, I don't say. prep for this at all. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so when you put the insulin in, what could happen is that the algorithm could think, well, she put in more insulin, not that it thinks of you as a person, but that would be weird if it did, but she, uh, <laughs> she put in, you know, another unit. We're just making up numbers. Um, yeah. but the the kid only ate 30 carbs an hour and a half ago. So now I have to quick take away the basil to try to make up for this extra insulin, which the, algor the algorithm is going to see as unnecessary because the algorithm believes that it's going to fix this 130 eventually. You're fixing it sooner so that the 130 doesn't become 170 before it turns back into 110 again. Is that all right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, okay. Um, and I mean, it's not nor it doesn't normally cause a huge problem. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, sometimes I do end up having to like give her a little bit of extra uncovered food uh, if I do notice that maybe I maybe I did something wrong okay. um, in the algorithms between me between it giving me between me giving it sorry me giving her insulin and then the algorithm giving her some as well. I mean, I have been told by like the nurses, hey, you know, watch when you're doing that because it is giving her that those many micro doses. So um, you know, you don't want to you don't want to overdo it yeah where where do you have the most success with her blood sugar sitting on the algorithm like where when you have stability away from food and away from call and away from mealtime insulin where does she sit steady she's like 130 which i would like her lower and i have her target at 110 but i i can't seem to get it to come down more and i don't know i'm trying to figure out like why 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 that's happening but she's usually if i can get her to sit steady she's she's sitting steady at 130 what settings do you have access to with omnipod 5 basil uh, yeah i mean i can access every i can change everything i, I have the diff so i just have one basil program because this is all all of that is new to me you know trying to figure out different um different basils for her and whatnot so i i just have one basil program mm -hmm. that i use i you can use you can add up to 12 different programs um so oh, I just have that. And let I me have stop her, you. Twelve different segments in a twenty-four hour period, or twelve different programs. Like twelve different. I believe it's twelve different programs. Like okay. she's on. I have Basil Program One right now because I just I left it at whatever the generic right. name is for it. But you can add more in there and you know rename them for you know activity or whatever you want to do. Right. Um. But I I'm not comfortable and confident with that yet so i haven't no no that's fair know, I, I was wondering though like like so what settings like forget like when you leave the algorithm like when you you know open it up but when you're inside the algorithm it's making decisions based on basil what else is there uh, a meal ratio yeah so it has all of the it has like the um your insulin to carb ratios um it has the uh insulin action time um, which I just changed that after listening to one of the podcasts mm -hmm. uh, to see if that will maybe help us at all. Um, oh, I don't have it in front of me. I left it out with my husband, but um, okay. meal ratio, insulin action time, basil. Um, is there a uh, insulin it, sensitivity? Um, I believe there is. And then it also does, you know, you have your max, your max basal rate. So mm -hmm. it won't, whatever that set at, it won't give more, um, regardless of what's going on. Like it, it, it if I have it at like 0.5 per hour, it's not going to give her above that for the hour. As if you said that as the max. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Whatever the max is for that, it won't give more than that. So have, it, you, it, I didn't mean to step on you. I'm sorry. Oh no, go ahead. Uh, go correct. Ahead. But you have also a correction factor, right? Like one unit moves yeah. there are so many. So you have, okay. So you have insulin action time, correction factor, meal ratio and basil. That's a lot to work with there. Um, and we have hmm. our targets. It, 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 you know, it factors in the targets. Yeah. And it's shooting for, you have it shooting for 110. 
Yeah, I have it 110 all, and I have 110 and then correct over 130. But it can't get her to 110 even overnight? It'll get, I mean, it gets her to 110, but it doesn't hold her steady at 110. She'll drift back up. Yeah, and I mean, overnight, generally, if I can, if we can, if we're having a good night, like if we go to bed and we aren't having any problems with, we just changed, changed a pump or, you know, we had a really carby meal or something and I was trying to get her to level out, mm-hmm. um, then she'll, she'll sit around 110 at nighttime. Uh, when she's not really do when she's not doing anything except for sleeping, but during the day I can't get her to to one ten. I mean, she'll go to it, but she's not gonna stay at it. She'll stay at about one thirty. What's her basal rate? Um, it's very. Um, can I? I I don't have her thing. You can go. Do you want to? Do you want to leave and come back? Well, just can I go grab it from my my husband really fast? I would love that. All right, give me one second. Okay. You guys are getting an ad right here. I need you to want to do better. We all want that, right? We all want to do a little better every day. Here's a spot where you can do better without ever even trying. You can upgrade your blood glucose meter. Ah, you say, that sounds like a big pain, Scott, because I already have a meter and test strips and I I know, but it's not that big of a deal. But what may be a big deal is that the meter you have now, it could be um, not good. Now, you might have a great meter. I don't know. And for those of you who do, maybe you don't want to switch. But many of us are walking around with old busted up meters that don't work very good. And when I think of a meter working well, I think first of accuracy. The Contour Next One Blood... My tongue just got stuck to my face. The Contour Next The Contour Next One blood glucose meter is nothing if it is not accurate. And it is actually more than that. But I'm saying top of the list for me, accuracy. That's why I love the meter. It's super duper accurate. It also has second chance test strips, a bright light for nighttime viewing. Um, what else does it do? Ooh, it's super easy to carry around because it's um it's a size. I don't know how to put it exactly. It's maybe an, a couple inches long, maybe a little longer than a couple inches. Um, but then, uh, you know, you should probably just go to the website since I realized that my I'm holding up fingers in front of me trying to decide how big things are, and that's not going well. Contournext.com forward slash juice box. Take a look at the meter. Take a look at all the savings you might be eligible for. You might be eligible for a free meter. There's all kinds of stuff going on at contournext.com forward slash juice box. No matter how big this meter measures, what I'm trying to say is it fits well in your pocket or your bag. It comes with second chance test strips, meaning if you touch the blood but don't get enough, you can go back and get more without messing up the accuracy of the test. The light is bright. The screen is easy to read. And these are the things that are important with a meter. Accuracy, ease of use, ease to transport, easy to read. I, I, I mean, I, it's, it's, I mean, it's a blood sugar meter, right? Like it's, I'm, I can't, it's not a car, right? I can't start talking to you about like rack and pinion steering, which I might not be a thing anymore, but um, it's not the point. I've hit the big spots for you. Now here's the rest is on you. You got to go to contournext.com forward slash juice box. Take a look. See if it's worth switching to for you. I'm telling you, I think it is. Of course, head over to touchbytype1.org to find out more about my favorite diabetes organization and to get registered for the big golf event on April 2nd. Come on, you're in Orlando. You've got golf clubs. You love people with diabetes. This is a no-brainer. Get out there. Touchbytype1.org. All right, now let's go dig in a little farther into this Omnipod 5 business with Sky. there it's the easiest ad break i've ever done in my life yeah absolutely so um so uh basal rate please okay so let me go into her basal you don't mind talking about this do you no um hold on a second oops don't switch i didn't mean to switch darn it so we just got so when we were on the um clinical trial you know it was just the provided cell phone that we used. Mm-hmm. And then when we got onto uh, the limited market release, we had used the PDM and then I got the 
the Samsung Galaxy S10, which is the only one that's supposed to be able to work with this right now. And we, I had to carry around both devices for the last month, which was really frustrating because the app wasn't ready. Like it wasn't available. So the app, the app just became available a couple days ago. So I finally just switched over to having the one phone again, which is really nice. That's um, exciting. Things Things are getting closer then. Every time I go, I take my daughter out and I have like all of her device. I have my cell phone and then this cell phone and then the PDM. Everyone's staring at me like, what kind of business are you running? Um, <laughs> I'm selling so meth. Nice. Leave me alone. Um, so <laughs> I've got bills, damn it. Um, so what's her, what's her basal rate? Sorry. Oh, my God. And what does she weigh? At? She weighs 50 pounds. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's see. From 12 a.m. to 6 a.m., she's 0.35. Um, from 6 a.m. to 12, 12 a.m. or to, mid- to midnight, she's 0.3. Yeah. So I'm just going to guess that her basal is a little low. And it could be. I've been uh, messing with that, too, because the the settings that the um, was they were, you know, the endocrinologist told me to have her on. Sorry, I'm stumbling on my words. You're fine. Um, they were lower than that. So I've been, like, slowly increasing them. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just doing it with caution because yeah I, no please does she get low yeah. often she you know what the clarity app said it, it's like been four percent um low over the last seven days which i don't think is bad and what are we calling um, low <clears throat> low for that it thinks that low is below 70 <laughs> like i have her okay. her settings at 70 to 130 so um, you, but if, i don't she doesn't like She'll go. I mean, she's had some lows, but she generally, if she goes low, she's in the 60s for a little bit and then comes up. Okay. Well, I mean, I think what you're doing with the basil is like a good move because there's probably space in there with the basil. I mean, if you're if you're correcting a, a 130, for an example, and it gets down to 110 and then wants to go back to 130, something is not holding it down. And the algorithm is thinking... <sighs> I mean, the algorithm is thinking that it, you have too much insulin. So the correction looks like too much insulin to it. But if your basal was heavier, it might not feel that way. So you, there's 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 space in there for you to figure it out. I think you um, get the basal straight first and then probably look at the correction factor and make sure that it's it's pretty accurate. One unit per yeah. whatever. I definitely don't think it's anything wrong with the system. I, I think like you're saying, it's just things that I need to get adjusted on my end. I think yeah. the system's doing a fine job. No, for sure. I mean, I, it sounds like it to me. I'm just trying to help you figure it out while we're talking about this at the same time. That's all. Um, yeah. I'm, I mean, <laughs> you can have all my stuff. You can help me. That's great. <laughs> You've helped me more without me even like meeting you <laughs> in the last, I don't know, six months than anybody else has helped me in the last three and a half years. So <laughs> I'm glad to know that. I'm I'm happy you're feeling better. Really? Seriously. It's a big deal. I mean, she's six, eight versus eight, five in a couple of years. So yeah. Yeah. Gr- and I, I'm reduction. confident that I can get her down to six. Like that's, that's my goal. That's what I'm, I'm going to do. Oh, I think you can too. Yeah, no, for certain. Tell me a little bit about the sleeping for a second. Um, you, uh, you and your husband are having loving sex now instead of angry sex, or you're not yelling at each other anymore. <laughs> or what is happening? What have I done for we, your life exactly? We have a six month old sleeping in our bed, so oh, never mind. <laughs> Nothing's happening. <laughs> I see. We're well, just not yelling at each other, at least. We're just not yelling. Well, yeah, not about diabetes. <laughs> 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 I mean, <laughs> there's always, you know. We're married. So. <laughs> I always think that some non-married people must hear this and just be like, oh, God, wait, what's going to happen? <laughs> I, I get worried when people are like, oh, well, my husband and I don't, we don't argue. And I'm like, mm, something's wrong with your marriage. You're going to end up killing each other then. You're holding it all in. <laughs> right. You're, you're going to be one of those stories. So those murder, suicides, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, they just, they never seem to fight. Then all of a sudden they just burned the house down with each other in it. <laughs> Great. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so just in general, better sleep, right? More, more consistent, solid sleep, I'm assuming. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not as, I'm not worried about her going, having a really drastic low in the middle of the night while we're sleeping. Mm-hmm. I, I do wake up to alarms. Um, you know, especially I have her, I, I have her at one thirty, And so if it drips up even a, a little bit above that, then I wake up from, okay. from that. But, um, it's nothing like it used to be. I'm incredibly so, yeah. excited to get a hold of it because a, a 110, an average blood sugar of 110 is a 5.5 A1C. 
So well, it's not out of the question to to make it work with the, the device the way it's set up right now. I mean, the problem is, is that if it, you're not always, I mean, there's variables, right? So you're not right. always hitting correctly, and you you that one ten becomes one thirty or one fifty or whatever, and then slowly this five five average becomes five eight, it becomes six, whatever, and that's how you know with the goal of one ten is a great goal, um, but if you're not keeping, I mean, if you if you're spiking, 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 then obviously you're not going to get the five five a one c out of it. I'm trying to say that I think there's a way. That based on how the algorithm is written right now, if you have your settings right and you're pre bolusing I bet you get closer to that 110 with more consistency. Is my guess? Yeah, I gotta. I have to get the spikes to to stop because we do have spikes that I I'm not able to. Um, I I guess I I don't know what I, I'm doing wrong, but she she'll spike after meals and like last night she had a a rough night with high blood sugars, which was due to like one of the things that that does kind of is a bummer um you can't use the extended bolus uh unless you get out of the automated mode Mm -hmm. and you you can't use the temp basil unless you get out of automated mode and you know before we got on the system we were using the extended bolus and and the temp basil a lot and then we got on the system and that was something that we we weren't really supposed to touch um that i was going to say that because you were asking about the what happened during the clinical trial. So we didn't use those features at all because, you know, the algorithm is supposed to be better than that. Um, It's supposed to do a better job than what, you know, we're, we do, but I think there's scenarios where really it it can't predict, it doesn't know what you're feeding, like what you're eating. Sure. Um, So yeah, you can't know the 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 algorithm's not going to overcome. Like for example, if your kid's basal rate should be more like five, like 0.5 and you have it at 0.3, the algorithm can't overcome that. If you're going to eat cheeseburger and French fries and have a massive impact from fat 90 minutes after you've eaten, it has no way to know about that. Like there, there's there's things that you can't do. Now, without an extended bolus, like I mean, for me, I mean, I bolus for fat. I just make an extra bolus for fat. Like I know some people probably make extended boluses and that's great, but I just usually wait a little bit of time and then bolus for the fat um, before the spike happens. Um, that just, and that's something we weren't doing at all until I right. just listened to that pro tip recently. Yeah. No, you're going to, you'll listen, you're, you're on your way. You're totally one of these people who six months from now is going to be like, I have a five, nine, a one C I figured it out. Like for my daughter, I, I got it straight. So, so, oh no, you will. Um, especially now that you're sleeping more, being really serious about that, the sleep part, we don't talk about nearly enough. It messes with you in so many different ways and it stops you from making good decisions and remembering to pre-bolus and remembering to do other things because you're exhausted all the time um i I, i'm interested to see how you are just in a couple of months after after sleeping you know what i mean it's it's going to be a really big deal i think that um i i I think that's going to be a huge thing for a lot of people um just being able to get to sleep is, is great. And I, I mean, I've been sleeping pretty well for the last, what, what did we decide it was 19 months? I don't, whatever we decided yeah. since I've been on the system. So, um, you know, we've, we've gotten pretty decent sleep, um, for a while, which I was Life like, changed. but then I had a baby, I threw a baby in the mix. Well, that's so your fault. That. I didn't do that. <laughs> you know, you guys stopped fighting long enough to make a baby. That's not, you should have just, no, went, he, just was, to, he was an IVF went. baby. I, I had to plan for him and uh, spend a lot of money on, on you should have so. just went to a movie or something. That would have been <laughs> <laughs> a better use of your time. I mean, I'm sure the kid's terrific. I'm not saying it. <laughs> he's great. He's, he's great. pretty great. He's six months old. You don't know if he's great or not. <laughs> <laughs> it's true <laughs> but he's cute he's super cute well there you go he looks good in the christmas card that's all you need yeah. really um okay i have a quick question that has nothing to do with any of this are you from the northeast you don't have to tell me exactly where yeah i'm from oh, do you not want me to well you Is don't it, like where's Waldo? well are you no, like in okay. I understand. are you no, in mass okay. no i'm in ohio okay i'm a born born and bred in ohio I've just been trying to figure out because you and one of the, so there's a person I know who's going to hear this who says Omnipod. And I don't oh. even I don't even know if that person knows that's how they say it or not. But they're the only person I've ever met who says that. And then you say it that way and I was fascinated for a second. So How should I be saying it? I mean, I don't know. Isn't it Omnipod? Oh, I don't know. You do say that. 
I, I, mean, I say Omnipod. Yeah. I, I, no, I know you do. And I'm not telling you you're wrong. I'm just saying I don't hear it that often. I was trying to figure out if you were, and this person were from similar places, but you're definitely not. So no, I'm, I'm from Ohio. No, yeah, no, it's fine. I, I, I just, I was like, I've been wondering for 40 minutes. You know, Scott, <laughs> I just pronounce things weird because I have an I in my name. <laughs> this is your mother's <laughs> fault. <laughs> it's my mom. It's my mom did it. Well, I wonder if that does have something to do with it. Maybe you do think of eyes differently. <laughs> That's it. I do. I think of eyes differently. All right, I don't know. Um, okay. So where are you? Uh, what was my question here? Um, are, are there anything are there things about it you don't like? I don't like that. I if I get out of um, automated mode to use the extended bolus feature or the uh, temp the temp basal rate that it doesn't remind me to go back into automated mode. Like it'll just keep me in manual and I, I won't forever. Rem- yeah. And it and I'm I, I've had two kids like my brain is. I have two kids. I deal with baby. I have diabetes. My brain is shot. So I can't remember. And then I'll find myself, you know, she's, she's rising up. She's high and it's my fault because I didn't put her back in automated mode. Oh, okay. So interesting. So, so Arden uses loop at the moment. It doesn't tell you when, like, if you open the loop, it doesn't remind you that you've opened the loop. So, and, and oddly enough, from hearing people talk about diabetes for so many years, I would tell you that most people want fewer reminders from their devices, not more. Um, yeah. But I'm, I take your point. So you're saying, also, how do we think about this? Like in loop, we say open the loop, close the loop. But when you leave the algorithm on Omnipod 5, like, is there a, is there a thing you're doing? Is there a function? You're on in automated or you're in manual? Auto or manual. Okay. All right. That's easy. So when you go into manual mode, um, it stops making adjustments to, oh, it stops making so adjustments manual, to the basal. Manual just turns it into a regular pump. It right. just takes your settings and it just gives, you know, gives based on the settings. It doesn't give those micro um, boluses or stop the boluses if the, right. or stop the, right. So you're seeing when you go into manual initially, it's so that you can make a bolus on your own for something. But then if you forget to put it back on, it's just running her basal at 0.35 or 0.3 and then she's rising up. Yeah. And I mean, it's only if I decide I, I want to use the extended bolus feature, which I know, you know, it's, I don't have to use it, but there's been some times where I'm like, I think I, I will do better if mm-hmm. I do do this. Um, I, otherwise, like when we were on the clinical trial and we, we never used that feature, uh, we would just manually do it where we would go, okay, you know, we're going to split this meal in half. We're going to give 50% now. And in like an hour, we'll give the other 50%. So we would just do it that way. Um, but I, I thought, you know, once we got on this, I would start just use trying to see if that would, how that would work out with the extended bullet since I didn't get to play around with it. And I, I've just caught myself in a couple of situations where I don't put myself, put her back in. Um, and then so, so your example, high. your example is again, making me think your basal is not high enough. Okay. Because if you, you're op- probably right. Because when the loop, oh, sorry, sorry, Omnipod, when it's an auto mode, there's so many different, like, Works. Uh, so when Omnipod <laughs> 5 is in auto mode um, and the algorithm is working, then if you're at 0.35 an hour, but it thinks you're going up, it's giving her more than 0.35 up to your max. What's your max again? Um, her max right now is. You told me 0.5, I don't know. right? I think it's 0.5 yeah. per hour. I'll tell you yeah. what, if I was you, and I'm certainly not, and this is definitely not medical advice, I'd make her basal. <laughs> I'd make her basal more like. Well, let me ask this question once. Oh, by the way, I just got a text. I just looked up on my computer. T- my wife's text to me, Wordle in three. We are in a blood sport over who can complete Wordle quicker every day. <laughs> so are you going to cancel the rest of this to go play Wordle? I have no, to go no. right now and beat her you, three. You I'm not going to do better you're than gonna, You're going to give me advice and now. No, I, no, no. I'm just it's over. No, I'm just amused. <laughs> She knows I'm doing this with you, and she knows these things pop up in front of me, and that's how much it means to her. She's like, Wordle in three. That basically, I'll have to bleep this out. What that basically means is, Q. <laughs> like, I, I've got you in Wordle today. There's no way you're you getting me. <laughs> I will be rooting for you Thank to win you. <laughs> your Wordle over your wife. Yeah, okay. I just checked. Her max basal rate is uh, 0.5. Okay, so hour. my expectation is, is that based on her weight, she could probably handle more basal. And so I don't know if it's actually going to be 0.5, but my question was going to be, how often does the algorithm max her basal out? Can you see that? 
you know what? I, I haven't. I can I can look in history and see. Um, I'm excited because we're about to fix our basal array together. That's amazing. Um, I don't know. It doesn't say on here like you can axed out. You you can't. <laughs> you can't see how you don't see like a graph. I, I can gotta... see like I can see like her. And so if I go into the history, it gives me a summary of you know what mm-hmm. what each of her. Um, her glucose numbers were and her boluses were and then the carbs that we did. And then if I go to auto events, it'll show me when it gave her, medic, you know, insulin. Um, so it'll show me like every five minutes if it gave her something or if it didn't. But it doesn't tell me on here, you know, you've reached your your max. So if it's trying to give her insulin and it's hitting her max over and over again, oh, excuse me, <clears throat> then my expectation is that you should make her basal that already and increase the max to give it more um, leeway. Okay. Right. That's what I would do. Like, if so this, then I should increase her max basal rate, obviously, as well. Yeah. I mean, definitely I would. Okay. Right. So I, I know you don't want to make it crazy, but I'd like to I I'd like to see you give the algorithm some more space to work. Well, so she's with she's with me twenty four seven. I I homeschool her. Oh. Um. So I I'm not afraid of like you know giving putting her in someone else's care with changes. So I don't mind making changes. Um. Obviously, I just. I'm just do it slow. I do slow changes like that way. I can kind of keep track of like, what did I do? I think you're smart. I absolutely do. I'm not being sarcastic. I know you're from Ohio. It's possible. You're not going to (laughs) like be able to hear it. But if you, this was, if, if Vera was me, I'd make her basal 0.5 and I'd make her max basal like a unit. I'd be like, let's see what this thing can do. (laughs) I'm I'm, going to see what happens. I'm I'm going to try. You know what I mean? Because then you're given the, I have to think of another euphemism. I was going to say you're giving the algorithm more rope, but I don't think like a hanging is a way to think of it. <laughs> um, but you're giving it more, you're giving it more leeway to make decisions on its own. Okay. That That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that I'm not, listen, this is not a rule, but little kids prior to puberty, 0.1 an hour per 10 pounds is a fair guess. So if she's 0.3, but she weighs 50, I think she's yeah. probably more like 0. 0.4, 0. 0.45, 0. 0.5, something like that. Um, okay. I still, I think 0. 0.3 is too low for her weight. And based on what you've said prior about where she's sitting stable. Well, I mean, she was, she was lower than 0. 0.3 before I put her at 0. 0.3 and I, that it, 0. 0.3 made a difference. Oh no. So I don't You're know telling me she was like 0. 0. 0.2 while she was yeah. 50 pounds? It was like 0. 0.2, 0. 0.25. Um, I, and I, her max basal rate was 0. 0.4. Sky, so I, have I to just tell you, started messing with that. I, you people all just stop going to the doctor and giving them their forty dollars. <laughs> Send me the forty dollars. Like that's just ridiculous. Point two for a fifty pound kid is. I mean, there are some people who, there are some people who don't follow the kind of rules. Their bodies don't need as much, or, as, or maybe they need more. I'm not saying that. It's not. It's not a blanket statement for every person. But point two for a fifty pound kid seems ridiculous to me, especially if they're not having any lows and your stability is at one hundred and thirty. Well, I think that the doctor's goal is just to, to keep them, um, it's it's to keep, like, I think our endocrinologist wants to keep her healthy, but I also think that they see a lot of people that don't manage diabetes very well because I've, I've been told by them, like, you know, you, you want to do better, but you're also doing really good compared to a lot of other people. That I don't see. know what that means. That's bull. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I personally, like, I... I think that they, they can, they can do better to, to help. I, every, everybody, everybody has a different goal. And, um, you know, I want my daughter to be lower, have a lower A1C and be more in range. And I, you know, I'm willing to put in the work to, to have that happen. Um, but maybe, maybe they just don't have people that are willing to do that. And so they keep them at a safe. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm making excuses. I'm making excuses. Yeah, don't Scott. stick up for those <laughs> people. Excuses. I'll tell you what I'd like to see you stick up for that husband, the way you're sticking up for this doctor right now. What do you think? Uh, of that? I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to tell him that you said I'm smart. <laughs> uh, I also told him you should have loving sex with him, but I don't think you're going to tell oh, yeah. him that part, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I might. I might. I'll, I'll, I'll see. <laughs> what I was going to say is, uh, uh, if this is controversial, I don't know what to say about it. But if your settings are right, your blood sugar would be lower. And you're right. To say right. that you know, to say that I'm um, 130 is great because other people come in here with 200s. 
I don't even I don't I don't understand what any of that means. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it would it would it would be like if you walked into the doctor's office and you're like, "Hey, how are you?" And he goes, "Good. Let me take a look at you." He looks at you and goes, "Hey, Sky, you have a, a seeping wound on your arm, but we're not going to treat it because I just talked to somebody whose whole foot fell off." So, like, <laughs> like, what is like what does that mean? Like, you're doing so much better than the lady whose foot fell off. So we're going to um we're just not even going to dress this wound because you're way ahead of her. I don't get, I, I think it's laziness. I don't think the doctors know how to talk to people. And I think, and and with due respect to them, uh, there's a, a rainbow of people that they have to speak to. And I'm yeah. sure that that goes, I'm sure that rainbow has a lot of different stripes in it. And some of those stripes are probably motivation. Some of them are probably economic. Some of them are probably um, intellectual. There's probably a lot of different things about people, right? That they have to deal with. But that doesn't change what the settings are supposed to be. Yeah. So the settings are the settings. Given somebody 0.2 who needs 0.5 and telling them they're okay because they're doing better than somebody with a 9A1C, like, I don't understand what that means. So, you know what I mean? This is why I was in a bad loop of just keeping my daughter's A1C in the high sevens to low eights for a year and a half because I just followed what I was told. No, of course, no, 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 no shade on you. Like that's just what happens to people. You know what I mean? You got it yeah. now. You're on it. Yeah, you're on it now. Um, what do you think we should call this episode? Omnipod Five and loving sex. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. absolutely. <laughs> My husband's going to be disappointed if he doesn't get the loving sex though. So. <laughs> I don't even know why I said loving. I think because otherwise I think of it as like angry when you're like when you're arguing, but you're still doing it. You know what I mean? You're like, you're like, <laughs> this is off the rails, Sky. I'm so sorry. You probably wanted your mom to listen to this. No, it's fine. Okay. I mean, she put, yeah, fine. She what? Like I said. If you put if you knew my mom, it wouldn't be a big deal, really. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> then we're okay. Anyway, um, I'm being like I'm joking, and at the same time. This is all tied together. If you don't think that your personal relationships aren't tied to your kids' blood sugars or your blood sugars, you're way wrong. You know what I mean? Like because when blood sugars are fluctuating, when they're you're constantly feeding lows or stopping highs or staring at highs, these things are stressful. They are um, omnipresent. They don't let you focus on other things. You take your focus off of things that are important. Other parts of your life devolve. It's all like. It, it's all touching each other. And by the way, did you hear yeah. a second ago when I said omnipresent? I didn't say omnipresent. I got it. Okay. But I could I have, it, right? Could I have said omnipresent? <laughs> but I, I would have said omnipresent. I know you would have, but you're from Ohio, yeah. so I can't trust you at all. <laughs> you guys, what do you guys get out there? Dave Chappelle and Drew Carey? Is that about it? We do have Drew Carey, yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't. We have Machine Gun Kelly. I saw on the news today he's holding a big concert, you know, big He Cleveland. lives there or he's doing a. Well, he's from he's from Cleveland, and I'm I'm outside of Cleveland. I'm like forty minutes outside of Cleveland. So. Chappelle owns a bunch of of property in Ohio, and he lives there full time. Like, I don't know why. Uh, he I, he he said I've heard him in an interview. He said he likes the small town feel of where he's at. Oh, so, I don't know. You're like I want to get the hell out of of Ohio. <laughs> I would love to, but I know my family would never visit me. And oh, they definitely yeah. wouldn't. I, my brother yeah. moved to Wisconsin. I've still never seen Wisconsin. He's like, why won't you yeah. come here? And I said, you moved to Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, Wisconsin, but I, I mean, there are lakes yeah, here. At least I'm in Ohio, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't even know what that means. I mean, there's a lake here. I can see it. My brother's like, come see the lakes. I'm like, what do I do eight minutes after I've seen the lakes? <laughs> what, what are we doing next? It's my vacation time. You know what I mean, Sky? Like, I don't get a ton of time yeah. off. You don't want to go to Wisconsin. Well, I mean... Oh, we just meet somewhere. Usually it's easier. Um, and I'm teasing mostly. I'm sure Wisconsin is a lovely <laughs> place and I don't want to hear from you people. So just please don't send me notes telling me that it's <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm sure it's lovely. Uh, although from my brother's description, it's freezing cold in the winter and sweltering hot in the summer. So that's not a, a ton of fun for me. Um, okay, hold on. What is it we don't know about Omnipod 5 that you wish we knew? Like, what do you want to tell us? Um, so I really, I like the activity feature. I don't know if you've heard about the activity feature. Mm -hmm. um, I do like that a lot. I think it's it's been beneficial. Like when we are, when my daughter's playing or she's doing something really excited that she's really excited about, and I know she's going to have a lot of a lot of activity or excitement, and her sugar's probably going to drop. It's it's really great to just set that. Um, like when we were on the trial, we were we went on a 
road trip and we were in Tennessee and we were hiking a mountain and, you know, that activity feature, having that on, she didn't go low during the entire hike, which was really great. Okay. So I, I really like that. I think it's really cool. Um, and it, it goes right back into automated mode. So I don't have to be reminded, which is wonderful. Can you set the um, length of time? for? Uh, yeah. So what it does is it, it changes your target to 150 and you set the length of time for that. Oh, so cool. you one hour, two hours, six hours. Um, I don't know what the, um, the max amount of time it can go up to. I've never tried that because my daughter's not active for that long, but, um, you know, we, we've used it for a variety of different situations and it's, it's been really, it's been really great. I really like it. Cool. Okay. Um, still holds up to 200 units like the old it one, does. right? Uh, minimum's 85. Minimum's 85. Um, what else? What else do we need to know? Like, would you, would you say that it's a, I mean, I guess you would, right? It's a big difference between managing without an algorithm for you. A big upgrade. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. I, I can't, I don't know what it's like to be on loop. Um, I've, I've listened to, you know, mostly just from your podcast, um, conversations regarding loop. And I, I feel like loop does a really, really, really good job. Um, and I, I am hoping that people who are going to be moving from loop to the, Omni, um, should I say Omnipod five, you should say whatever um, you want. That, uh, <laughs> that they're not going to be disappointed. Um, because I, I think that, you know, there's things that it like the target, for instance, I know that's going to be a big difference for a lot of people. Cause I think what you get, you can set your target a lot lower than 110. Mm -hmm. I, so I, I'm hoping that people aren't going to be disappointed in that. But for me coming from what I, what we were, you know, the original Omnipod, uh, to this, I, I love it. I think it's great. Um, I'm trying to think of other things I love about it. I love that it's just one device. That's amazing. I, I cannot tell you how disappointed and how sad I was carrying around those two devices for a month. And I felt like a privileged child, like crying, you know, like, because, oh, I, what was me? I have to carry two devices again. Mm. Um, but like just having this, this, the cell phone with me is wonderful. Um, so I love that. Uh, the distance, I don't know what dash, uh, how, like how close you have to be to the child or to the person, whoever, whoever has diabetes, whoever has the pump, how close you have to be in order to dose them. But I know with uh, the original, I would have to be like on top of my daughter. And, you know, it was supposed to be a five foot range. And there were times where I had to be like touching her pump pretty much in order to get it to dose. Mm -hmm. And with this, I've been able, like I'm in my room right now, my house is small, but I'm in my room right now. She's out in the living room doing something and I can dose her right now and it wouldn't be an issue or she can be outside and I can dose her. Um, so I, the range is really good, which I love. Excellent. You know, I once did a, um, Arden did like this market research thing for Omnipod when they were making the new PDM, which is now the old PDM. And it worked. <clears throat> we were in an office. It worked like 25 feet away from the pod. And I remember that the F, TC, is that right? FCC or the FTC, whichever one's in charge of like signals, um, made them turn the power down on it. So I did notice on the trial version, it, it had a much bigger, it had a, a large, longer range than the, um, the, this version, mm -hmm. but it's still good. Like it's still really good. Good. Yeah. Um, and you don't have to have just so people understand like the, the device, so you have a, you have the PDM, right? Are they calling it that now or are they calling it something different? No, it's a PDM. Yeah, it's, um, it is a PDM and my PDM that I had when they sent it to me, it actually was defective. So, uh, that was a whole thing. They, I had to get a new one and then, you know, I get the new one and then they got the app out. So luckily I don't have to use, use that. Mm -hmm. But, um, I don't, I don't like the new PDMs that they compared to the, well, I, I guess on the trial I was using a cell phone, um, Oh, that was the other thing too. I'm sorry. I'm going everywhere now. Um, the, the PDM that they provide you with, um, it, it doesn't do like your, your Dexcom. It, it just shows you the graph. Uh, when I was on the trial, the Dexcom was built into the app. So everything you did for Dexcom was through the app, which is kind of a bummer too, because now you have to open up both the, the app for the Dexcom, if you want to, you know, if you if you're going to change the Dexcom or do anything with Dexcom, you have to open up the Dexcom app. And if you're going to do anything with the, what would you, um, I'm sorry, what, that what, app. what would you do with the Dexcom? Because th you're bringing up something that I've noticed a million percent, which is we don't even look at the Dexcom app ever anymore. 
Like it's it's so, never. I mean, it's open and it's running, but no one looks at it because it her CGM information's in the loop app. I can't turn off alarms in the loop app. Like I, I was able to do that. Oh, not the loop. Sorry, my bad. In the Omnipod <laughs> Five app. Well, on the Omnipod Five app, I can't turn off the alarms. Like if I get a high alarm or a low alarm, I have to go into the Dexcom app to turn it off. And when I was on the clinical trial, I didn't have to do that because you accessed the app through like you access Dex you accessed Dex Dexcom. Why does it sound like I'm saying that weird? You, uh, through the Omnipod app, and now you don't do that. What you do just you, have this. Graph. What do you mean by turn off the alarm? Do you mean like do you ch- do you turn on and off alarms very frequently? Like if I get an alert that says she's going high or an alert that says she's going low, I have to go into the Dexcom to do it. To do what? I'm not following you on this. So like you know where it says, "Hey, you're you're you're." Alarm, you're high your blood sugar is high and you have to hit okay and if you don't hit okay then it just keeps telling you um, do you not have these issues because your daughter's blood sugar is in better control than mine <laughs> i'm like i'm not sure what you're talking about <laughs> so um on arden's phone hers come up as um oh i think you can go into your i in an iphone at least there's different ways that you can get um notifications they can either pop up on your screen and need intervention or you can have them just roll up on the top of your screen and then go away on their own so we don't have ours ours don't stay around they go away on their own oh yeah i don't know like last night for instance her sugar kept going to like 133 135 and um every time it went off it would it would make a you know a noise and then i'd have to go into the dexcom app and i'd have to hit okay really Uh, if i didn't then and I and I can put it on to like you know never re, never repeat or repeat every hour or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I have to hit okay. That's what not happens a thing. if you don't say okay? It just keeps telling you, like beeping over and over again. Like it'll it'll go it'll stop and then it'll do it again. Are you saying just to make it disappear off the screen, like the video like representation? No, like no. To get it to to get like I have her setting at never repeat right now. Let's mm-hmm. say like I have. If, if it goes off, it's never repeat. Um, and if her, if her sugar is still high, that way it doesn't keep telling me. I just, you know, go in and I'll fix it or whatever. But if I, if I don't do that and, um, I just leave the warning on there, I, you know, you're making me feel like I'm crazy. I well, don't think I'm crazy. I don't think um, you're crazy, but I don't, I am definitely not following what you're saying. <laughs> so it'll, it'll, like, every, I don't know what the time difference, like every five, five minutes, minutes or, or minutes. whatever. Yeah. yeah it pops just, up again, I, but I it, hit okay. Why? But what happens if you don't hit okay? It just keeps chiming. It's like t- after, like it'll stop and then it'll, it'll go beep, beep. And then, you know, I won't do anything. And then like five minutes or 10 minutes later, it'll go beep, beep. Hmm. Like, hey, hey, dummy, come in here. Look at me. I'm beeping okay. at you. All right. It's so th- once you interact it just- with it, if you, you, you think it feels like it knows you're there and you're aware. Yeah. It's like it, it needs me to say okay to it. Hmm. Interesting. I've never Is thought that- about it like that once, so I'm not certain. <laughs> oh I could be completely wrong, Sky. Yeah, I'm crazy. Do I have like some special decks? No, <laughs> I could be completely wrong. I mean, and Arden's. I don't. I don't want people to think Arden's blood sugar never moves around. Um, it's been incredibly stable today, but um, it, it it'll go up and down. Like we, we get alarms. You know what I mean? So, um, I mean, she's a little my, h- high right now. My doctor- is just more needy than yours apparently. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I I'm I'm not following what you're saying. So uh, what I will tell you is that on loop I think that Arden's Dexcom app becomes almost unnecessary. Like we use it probably I mean to swap sensors and if we ever calibrate and other than that I don't ever see it. And she doesn't, she never looks at it. If she looks at what her blood sugar is, she looks at, oh, I, oh, interesting. She looks on the loop app, which on Omnipod 5's app, you can see your blood sugar, yeah. right? Yeah, I can see it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Or, um, I, to be honest, I have a widget on my screen now for Omni, for Dexcom. I barely ever see the Dexcom app because the widget's right on the front of, of my phone every time I open it up. So, do you have an Omni? Do you have an iPhone? I do. Yes, I. So I am on the Follow app with my iPhone, but her the phone that I have to use for her is the Samsung Galaxy S10, right. which I just I hate this phone. Is it but, her um, phone? Does she get a phone now? Well, she it's her it's her device. Yes, this is what we use for her. But 
Um, I'm not, a, I'm not an Android person. You don't like it. I'm an iPhone person. Um, so I don't, I don't know anything like, I don't know how to, I don't know. I have to give it to my husband and say, here, set something up. Cause he has an Android. <laughs> but- I can't wait for them. <laughs> I can't, all these devices, I can't wait for them to cover more cell phones, iPhone, Android, everything. Um, and for this to become the norm, which it will be one day. I just can't wait to get to it because I, I, I don't disagree with you. Like carrying extra devices sucks. Like the one thing that's great about loop is that the loop is an app. So it's right. Yeah, on, that- it's right on Arden's phone. She, she doesn't have, she hasn't carried, Arden hasn't carried a PDM in so long. Like I'm not hundred percent sure she would know what it was if I gave it to her, you know? <laughs> well, um, that's, and that's how this is now with this app. You know, my daughter can just carry this phone around with yeah. her. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it only works right now on that one phone, right? It, yeah. Only on this one phone and yeah. the, the, the app, they kept asking me, like they would send me a survey and stuff. And they'd ask me questions about if we were using the app or if we're using the PDM. And I'm like, we can't use the app. The app's not available. And I, was on the phone with um, with them when my PDM was having failures mm-hmm. uh, a few weeks ago, and they kept telling me that they, they weren't going to release the app on the limited market release. So I'm very, very happy that they changed their mind I bet they did. I, I, I don't know anything, but I bet you that it just happened sooner than they thought. So they got it together, and they're like, let's do it, is what I would guess. Also, Omnipod, if you're listening, why do I not have Omnipod 5 yet? What is happening right now? You know how much better I would have been on this episode, Sky, if I had this thing, right? It would make probably make me look really dumb. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying I would understand things better and I would sound more together. And you know, we I really well, know. Hey, what was I, have, I have a PDM I'm not using. If you want to look at it, I can. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna look at. I'm wait my turn like everybody else. That's fine. <laughs> well, you wouldn't be able to use it. I mean, you need the pods, but yeah, no, no, I'm supposed to get OmniPod it. five as soon as I, well. I, I, I'm not sure I'm supposed to say this, but anyway, my expectation <laughs> is that I'm getting Omnipod 5 soon after the limited market release is over. Um, but I'm saying chop, chop. You know what I mean? Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder, I'm, I'm interested to find out if you're going to be disappointed. No, I'm um, not going to be disappointed I mean, at all. You want to know what I think? I love that. I love, 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 love Omnipod. But just um, from you going from a loop, from a looper to the you know, this algorithm, I'm just interested to see how it works for you. Arden is six months away from going to college. So anything perceived that I'm going to lose about loop, I'm going to gain in other ways. Um, One example, Omnipod five does not require a linking device between the phone and the, and the, and the device is the pump. Right. So um, huge. That's a huge leap for us. So, and also by the way, the Omnipod five talks to the Dexcom directly you don't even need the pdm to be near it for the algorithm to work no right yeah you don't it's great if you took arden's phone and chucked it out the window her loop would stop working oh wow right okay if you lose the little thing that she's got to carry in her bag constantly she's using something called an orange link um this little device that links her it lets her phone talk to the pod um if that thing if the battery dies if it whatever she loses the loop um, Omnipod five comes from a company. It shows up at your house and it works. Loop has to be set up on a computer and you need to be an app developer to do it. And there's all these other things. What I'm telling you is that one day that loop app's going to need to be rebuilt or something like that. And my daughter's going to be away at college. And can you imagine if I got her on the phone? I said, okay, get out your laptop, open up your developer account. Like, but she'd be like, no, like, I don't know how yeah. to do any of this. So there's that. Um, those are my big ones, honestly, like those two things are a big deal for us. Well, those are huge. I mean, those, those in itself, you, you are right. I, I, I think you're going to love that. Right now. Do I, uh, her target blood sugar on loop is 85. So that, you know, uh, uh, that might be tough to walk away from. But at the same time, I think there's got to be a way to put the settings right where this happens. I keep getting notes from people who are like, hey, I'm using an algorithm and I have a constant blood sugar that's under the target range. Like I get a lot of notes like that from people. So I I, I think it's doable. What's that? (laughs) That's what I need. I need to be able to to accomplish that. I've never once got that note from you. But um, (laughs) (laughs) I don't maybe you wouldn't. Maybe I sent it and you didn't look at it. But but (laughs) I I think I just want to get my hands on it to try it. Like if yeah. I could find stability for Arden around a hundred for the four years she's away at college, I'm in. You know what I mean? So when you get it, 
you are going to contact me and then help me. Is that what you're saying? Well, I was going to have a I'm... podcast so everybody could hear it, but I mean, you, you, you want one on one. No, but like directly, you'll just help me <laughs> with my daughter's numbers because my, my I'm going to, I'm going to make, well, do you want to really know what I think? What? All right. Well, Sky, first of all, your, your episode's going up like tomorrow. Like you're, you're oh, not, it is? Yeah, you're oh, not wow. going to have to wait to hear yours. Okay. So, um, okay. But what I what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself proficient at it, and then I'm gonna do a pro tip series with Jenny about it. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's all. And you know, on it we'll do as much as we can, just like we always have been trying to get out as much information as we possibly can for people. So if I if there's things that I I have questions about, I can email them to you, and you can maybe include them in the pro tip. Oh, please! I'm gonna be looking for questions from people at some. Point. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, there's no okay. end to this podcast. This is gonna go on forever. Don't worry. That's unless Great. I stop Great. eating, you know, like, you know, I get sick or something. I mean, you you know, I did eat an egg today and nothing else so far. So I'm I'm probably not going to live forever. <laughs> so, <laughs> but as long as I can, I'm going to keep trying to add value into the community for people who, have, who use insulin, you know. So that this you, is one of those things. Did you have any more questions about the. I don't know. I don't even know if I asked you any questions. trial or anything. Well. I mean, it sounds like it went well. It sounds like that it was unobtrusive in your life, which, you know, we should say to people, do clinical trials. They help people, you know. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, it sounds like it sounds like you're happy with the device. It sounds like you're still trying to get the settings set up. It sounds like there's a lot of, of ceiling still above you here. Um, but even if you have your settings wrong and you're not always pre-bolusing, it sounds like you're getting a 6.8 A1C. That's amazing. You Clarity know. actually told me it's six seven since, um, like it, Clarity's estimating six seven. So I, I'm thinking it came down a little bit more too. Good, even since since I've been on this new system. Yeah, I mean, I would tell you just you got a pre bolus. It's the biggest part of all of it. It just really is. You know what I mean? Like if you don't want spikes, right. pre bolus. If um, you know, if you want. You know, you've probably heard me say it on the podcast before, but if, if Vera's going to have a snack and you feel bad about making her wait, you could over bolus to cover the spike a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I've been doing that. I just, I tend to like last night I did that with um, macaroni and cheese and it was gluten-free mac and cheese because I eat gluten-free and uh, she, I was just fighting highs. I, I messed up. I don't know what I did, but well, it, mac and I, cheese, she like, yeah, mac and cheese is hard. It's I, the I, noodles I, and the fat. And the slow digestion, um, you know, from the fat. So, I mean, you just need to know that just needs a lot of insulin. That's I mean, my problem is, is I gave her a high dose up front and then it's like, it's, it, it didn't cut and I, we pre bolus for it, but then by the time everything kicked in, you know, it was out of her system. Like the insulin, it, it's like the insulin had already hit and she ended up with a low, um, because okay. I gave her a heavy bolus. And then she got and, hit harder by the fat and, she, and the, the yep. slow digestion later. So, yeah. So, I mean, you got a pre-bolus. Then you look at that situation. You say, okay, I still needed the pre-bolus, not as much of it. I probably needed mm -hmm. a secondary bolus with that insulin plus a little more later. Yeah. That would be my That's guess. Learning. I'm, I'm yeah. trying to learn that. No, it's interesting to talk to you, too, because she's had diabetes for a couple of years, but you've only really been in the fight for a couple of years. Like, how long has she had it versus how long do you feel like you've been... Um, what's the word I want? Like, like how long has your awareness been higher that there's more that needed to be done? Um, it really started with the trial. Like that's, that's when I, when I started seeing changes and movement and feeling like maybe we were accomplishing something that we weren't accomplishing before because I felt so stuck. Mm -hmm. Um, so like a year and a half ago, but then it really, really, really hit me when I started listening to the podcast. Okay. Well, like yeah. I was like. I can do this. Like, I, I absolutely can do this. Oh, I'm glad. And also, to me, then that means the time she had diabetes before that, you don't have to, like, don't feel bad about that. You know what I mean? Like, you're just getting into it now, and you're figuring it out very quickly. So, I, I think yeah, there's I a lot of ceiling. Over. Say that again, I'm sorry? I said it feels like we're starting over. Yeah. You know, that's that's kind of the way I look at it is. You know, we're obviously in it. We know we have better tools than we did, obviously, when we started. And my mind is in a lot better of a place than it was when we started. Um, but we're starting over to try and, and achieve some goals. It's an incredibly, uh, incredibly common story. So I wouldn't spend five seconds feeling bad about it. I'd feel great about what you're doing. You know, I do feel good about it. Good. Excellent. So you're going to keep using Omnipod 5. You're not getting away from it. 
Oh, absolutely not. No, I, I am like so nervous that I'm very nervous that when it's commercial, the commercial release comes out that my insurance like will not cover it. I, I don't know why I'm just like freaking out about it because I can't like, I can't get off of this. I need this. Well, they cover dash, right? They do. Yeah. And I'm yeah. hoping that because of that, but it, I, I just, you know, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen and it just makes me nervous. So we'll try not to be nervous. They say that worry is a waste of imagination. So oh, that's like that. Yeah. Just, uh, just don't worry about things you don't know to be true. That's all. Uh, that's super easy, right? (laughs) Meanwhile, you're, you're six months after having a baby. You're probably still dosed to all those like crazy, like mommy hormones and everything. Right. (laughs) Yes. I have some crazy left in me believe me oh yeah <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Crazy. yeah you you probably are having weird dreams do you think all kinds of crazy stuff is going to happen to you listen my kid is 22 and last week we were in florida for a baseball thing and they had a little problem with their transportation right five days after they had problem with their transportation my wife goes to sleep next to me falls asleep in a split second stirs and in her sleep says there's not enough space on the bus for the boys so don't expect any of this to end anytime soon. <laughs> my husband and I were just having a conversation about this the other night. He was making some weird noise in his sleep and I had to hit him in the face because he was driving me insane. And uh, and I, I was just making fun of him and he just he just told me like, Sky, you eat Oreos in your sleep. And, you know, I, I, I've been working with dogs for the last 17 years. And he's like, and one time you got, got up out of bed and you tried to put a dog in a crate on our wall. So I don't want to hear it. So wait, you eat Oreos, like real Oreos or fake Oreos? Yeah, I used, no, I used to actually, I used to sleep, eat Oreos. It was a problem. It was an actual problem. There were crumbs in my bed. It was was a thing. It was a real thing. Oh my God. That's amazing. (laughs) Yeah. And and I would get mad. I'd be like, where are the Oreos? You know, and it started when I was in high school. My mom would be like, Sky, you came in, you came down and you ate them last night. Like, what do you mean? Where are they? And you punched this guy in the head? I, I smacked him in the face the did other he, night. Yeah. Did he, he ever hit popping, you for the Oreo? Wait, what was No. He? No, he's he's very loving. <laughs> oh, sure. Not like you. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, all you single guys out there, good luck. Um, uh, all right. <laughs> did you – do you have – I was wondering, I was prepared in case you were going to ask me about autoimmune in my family because I know that's a thing that you do. All right, Sky, go ahead. Do it. Okay. Bust it out. What do you got? <laughs> Well, I don't want um, you to hit me in the face. I, Do whatever you want. <laughs> I I have hypothyroidism. I have Hashimoto's, um, and I haven't. Which I don't know that I've ever heard you discuss with the MTHFR gene mutation. Um, I have that. My daughter has that, which is not an autoimmune disease, but it does. It's a gene mutation that can affect. It can cause issues with your immune system. Uh, and my mother, like, we pretty much just have thyroid issues. My husband doesn't have anything that he's aware of. Okay, hold on a second. Um, it's the mother effer. No, I'm just. No, it's <laughs> what it looks. It's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> it looks like the it's mother effer mutation. <laughs> MTHFR gene variant looks like mother effer gene variant. But while meth. Tholentrotrophohydrofolate. Re- oh my God! Never say that. Just say M. Yeah, don't. Just yeah, call say it the mother. M T H F R is better. And what is it? Oh, it's a rare so, disease. Congratulations. No, no. So actually, a lot of people have it, but they don't. They a lot, most most medical doctors, which go go figure, they don't think it's a big a big deal. And the only reason I even know I have it is because I went through. IVF and um, all this infertility issues for eight years. And so I asked to be treated or tested for it because it can cause miscarriages and whatnot. And uh, I have a double copy of it and I passed it on to my daughter. But what it does is it like your body can't process um, like synthetic folic acid. Um, You can only process like methylated folates, um, methylated B12, B6. Um, It can't. So you, you end up normally with like a vitamin D vitamin B, sorry, deficiency. Uh, and you can, you can have a homocysteine level like increase, which is an amino acid. Like your, your body normally will, uh, get rid of this, the homocysteine levels. And, um, if you can't, if your body can't do that, then you can end up with, uh, like a heart disease, various cancers, um, stroke, uh, people that have bipolar in their family, anxiety, stuff like that are symptoms of it. Uh, mm. And it, it can cause miscarriages because it's a clotting factor issue. Uh, so 
I was looking, I've been recently looking up research to see if there's anything that like ties in with the, you know, um, uh, autoimmune diseases and whatnot. So, and, and it, but from what I can tell it, it, because it can affect your immune system overall, it definitely can play a part in it. And I know, um, like I was reading about, uh, delayed vaccines and whatnot with my son. And there were recommendations with you of like type one diabetes and the MTH FR mutation in your family, you know, different schedules and stuff for delayed vaccines, um, because of how, how it can affect your body. So yeah, it's just something I never had never heard or I haven't heard yet. And I wasn't sure if you had heard of it. No. Is there anything you can do for it or take for it or no? So you, it's funny because I didn't know I had it when I was pregnant with my daughter and I took folic acid the whole time. They tell you, you know, take folic acid when you're pregnant, but I really should have been taking folate, methylated folate. So you just have to take methylated, um, folate, like in its purest form. And then the, the B vitamins, um, methylated B vitamins, and you don't eat, you can't eat anything that is enriched with folic acid. So like enriched rice, bread. So I, I stick to a gluten-free diet because of that. And my daughter, I don't, she has the mutation, but I don't restrict her. Um, she does eat a lot of gluten-free things because I eat them. Uh, but yeah, mostly you, you just, you, you can't eat those types of processed things because your body can't, can't process it right. Okay. Cause it's, it's synthetic. Interesting. I'll have to find out if I can get somebody on who understands it. Cause that is kind of fascinating. I was looking at it while you were talking and, uh, I would be interested to know more. Um, Nobody else though, huh? Just the hype, the Hashimoto's for you. Any extended family have anything? No, not that we're aware of. And honestly, like my thyroid levels, it's I love I love all of your thyroid um, series and tips because my thyroid levels were in what they consider a normal range. The only reason that they were ever tested was I started infertility treatments when I was going to have my daughter, and they, you know, that reproductive endocrinologist they test your thyroid. And, um, it was like a four and they were like, oh no, you can't have, you can't be at a four. We need to get you down. You know, we won't, we can't do treatments on you if you're this high. But my other doctors said that that was normal. Mm -hmm. Um, so I wouldn't have been even treated for it had I not been going through fertility treatments. Um, and, um, my, but my mom, my mom has, I don't know what her levels are, but my mom has hypothyroid as well. And then I asked to be tested for antibodies for Hashimoto's, uh, and, you know, luckily I've asked for all of these things. So yeah. they've been brought to my attention, but had I not asked for any of them, they wouldn't have been. Interesting. Well, wow. okay. I appreciate you telling me all this and for sharing all this information about Omnipod 5 and your experience. This has been very cool. I expect to have a lot more conversations with people about stuff like this in the future. I think algorithms are going to be a big part of uh, living with diabetes moving forward. And uh, I'm excited to talk about it more with people. But you were yeah, I, absolutely terrific. Go ahead. Thank you. I um I share more of our um Omnipod Five uh, journey on my uh, Instagram. I I try not. I might. I have like a page that I do for it because mm-hmm. my family and friends don't really care. So like, <laughs> you know, but I like talking about diabetes. Um, so I have like a a page that I I share more of our journey on. If anyone's interested, what's it called? Um, it's called Our Wonderful Life, but it's wonderful is O N E like type one. So it's our wonderful life. And, um, I'm on Instagram and I have a a Facebook that I do for that, which I, that's how I, I had posted about it through there. And I, I got, I got scolded by Scott on your Facebook. What did I do? (laughs) You all know you didn't scold me, but you said on there, like, Hey, you know, you can't share things from, from your pages. So if you want to talk about this, then let's, yeah. yeah. Listen, hold on a second. First, I want to get out your Instagram handle. So what is the, Um, at our, our, I'm sorry, at our wonderful life. So it's our wonderful life. O N E D E R F U L. I'm trying to find it. I'm on the, what they call the Instagram. Um, R O U R that's first, right? It's O no, it's O U R. Wait, isn't that? Yeah. Isn't that our wonderful O U R O N E D E R F U L L I F E. I got it. Hold on a second. I see it. O U R O N E D E R F U L I F E, right? F U L L I F E. Okay, thank you. So that's on Instagram. And back to what happened on the thing. So I have uh, what you might call a popular Facebook page. You do. Uh-huh. And um, yeah. and here's one of the problems that comes with having a popular Facebook page. People 
uh, want to steal your people. So I thought we were just end with people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, but no, but what seriously happens is you become like, um, I mean, for me at least, I feel like I have a responsibility, right? So if I start letting people um, sell things in there, like I have a T-shirt I want to sell or my Facebook page or this or that, like I can't keep on top of all that. And so I can't, what do I want to say? If I can't be sure that what's being shared is what it purports to be, I wouldn't feel comfortable with it being shared. And because I don't have time to do that, it's just a flat out, it's just, it's a flat rule. Like you just can't pimp yourself in there. Because, oh no, I absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I totally get it. I just I can't just keep up with it. That's all. Uh, but I'm, it amazes me that you are like, you mediate your Facebook group with 20 some thousand members in it. It's, it's incredible. But I was, uh, it was just funny because when you did that, I was like, Oh no, I just like, I felt like I was getting scolded by like my dad or something. I, you know? Nothing I was like, like oh, that no, at all. No, I no, no. Got, I just got, got upset. Like, oh. I was not upset. I'm just, I'm just so pretty, much. I think I'm just pretty matter of fact online. And I think that doesn't come off well sometimes, uh, but no, you were fine. Oh, you were good. Fine. No, I just, I just want to call you out on it. That's oh fine. no, I appreciate it. You know, but seriously, like I can't keep up with it. So I barely moderate that Facebook page. Like there's really, I mean, <laughs> Here's the secret to my Facebook page. There's no real moderation. Like the real, like, 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 you know, if people are terrible, you know, no. If people are like, you know, my gonorrhea went away when I, like, you know, that kind of stuff goes out. The, like we delete that stuff very quickly as fast as we can. But people's conversations, I just want them to have their conversations. I just can't let it get, I mean, I, I guess think of it this way. Like if, um, I don't know, a company selling widgets their biggest problem after they've made a good widget is how to find people who want to buy widgets. And yeah. my Facebook page is so full of people who have diabetes that they, to a nefarious person would look like fish in a barrel. And Absolutely. I do not want them treated that way. And because I can't keep up with it, it's just a flat. No, like it's just a no. And that's just what I do. So, and I appreciate you having the conversation there because then, I mean, the truth is that, having a conversation in that space is going to reach a lot more people than having it in a different space. I think. Oh, you are 100% correct. Yeah. I agree with you. No, see, I'm right. That's all we needed to say. (laughs) (laughs) Well, let's thank sky for doing this. And, um, I'm tired. It's so much energy. I just I just got back from vacation and I'm like, all right, well, I'll try again. Ready? Hey, let's thank Sky for coming on the show and sharing her story. I'd also like to thank Contour Next One, that lovely, lovely blood sugar meter that you should be checking out at contournext.com forward slash juice box. And of course, touched by type one.org. Go sign up for the golfing event. There is literally no time left. I mean it's like two weeks, but hurry. I'm just going to add this here at the end. Omnipod is not a sponsor of the episode, but, um, you know, they do buy ads on the show and I get sponsor links. And um, so if you'd like to learn more about Omnipod 5 or even let Omnipod know you're interested, it's Omnipod.com forward slash juice box five. It's the digit five. So the word juice box, one word, five. Omnipod.com forward slash juice box five. I'd appreciate if you used my link. That's pretty much it. I don't actually get paid if you click on the link. They buy ads. I don't want to explain this whole thing to you, but they buy ads. The companies buy ads. I don't get money per click, but, you know, if the ads perform well, then they come back next year, and you following my links, I I mean, I don't have to explain this, right? You understand how it works. They buy ads. You click links if you end up following through on the clicks that's better just clicking on it's good um i mean for me by me i mean the podcast and that's how advertising works there's advertising 101 kids you know interestingly t1d exchange that i spoke about earlier they don't buy ads that's actually a thing where i get paid every time you complete the survey all the rest of the spot i am so tired tonight for some reason i'm so sorry all the rest that all the rest of advertisers, dear God, all of the other advertisers are like more 
you know, they buy ads, I read their ads, or I make them up, or you, you must tell by now they can't be written down, right? They're like falling out of my head as I'm saying them. Um, not the point, really. The point is, they buy ads. And, you know, if you support the sponsors, then you're supporting the show and they come back next year and you get more content. You understand how all this works. Anyway, I really am tired. I wonder why that is. I didn't do much today. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. <sighs> I apologize. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back very soon with another episode of the Juice Box Podcast. Weirdest ending ever to a podcast episode. I stand by that. If, it, if there's a weirder one, I don't know what it is. You tell me. I'm really sleepy. This could be it, kids. You think this is it? You know, once you get over 50, everything that happens, you're like, is this it? I just got tired out of nowhere. Huh. Maybe it's just bedtime. Let's not jump to conclusions. Anyway, if you get another episode, if I, if episode 651 comes out, I'm still alive.